What happens at the end of a narcissistic relationship? Do you see how they start changing? Do you see how something becomes different? Do you see how the next thing starts ending up of being like, wait a second, they're starting to give that person everything that I wanted. They're starting to do the things that I thought was going to happen in their relationship. What's happened at the end of your relationship? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this platform to provide awareness, growth, healing and change to be able to help people understand what narcissism actually is what it looks like in real life because a lot of times just reading through the dsm-5 and seeing the nine traits and understanding okay they have ego they have entitlement they have they're envious you know all these different types of things doesn't match up to real life of like wait a second this is what it looks like this is how it's demonstrated by this action or by this action or by this response and so being able to see that and hear that from oftentimes a narcissist perspective or even times we do research, talk to other people about it to get an idea of this is what's happening. Narcissism is real and it's destructive in nature. It's destructive in how it hurts other people through the ego, through the entitlement, through everything that happens in the relationship that destroys other people's lives. So we're on this platform, multiple platforms to provide awareness, growth, healing and change. We do that by dropping nuggets of truth every single day on all the different platforms. So if you're watching here on YouTube, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure to follow on some of the other platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, obviously YouTube, we're on Apple, Apple Podcasts, and also Amazon Music, all over the place, Spotify. So go on and follow us, give us a likes, give us a couple shares under Raw Motivations. Look us up everywhere, Raw Motivations. So today I wanted to talk about like what's happening at the end of the relationship because the end feels crazy, right? Like the end feels like there's no way to even get to the end or how is it even going to happen? A lot of times leading up to getting to the place of where, okay, this relationship's over, we need to call it off, like we need to break up, we need to get a divorce, like whatever it might be, there's all this like crazy making going on. Whether that's gaslighting and thinking like you can't even rely on your own senses to know what's happening, or whether that's the love bombing, thinking that you're getting all this stuff that because the other person is changing or developing, or whether that's just future faking, saying, hey, this is going to happen, and then it never happens, it never comes to fruition. So when you're getting to the end of the relationship, there's oftentimes this giant like push pull of hot, cold, back, forth of I don't want you. I want you. I don't want you. I want you. I don't want you. What's actually going on there? You see, what's happening with the narcissist is oftentimes they want to be able to get out of the relationship, but they don't want the responsibility. They don't want the accountability. With great power comes a lot of responsibility. Well, with the narcissist, all they want is great power. They don't want the responsibility and they don't want the accountability of their actions and what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so when they see, oh, here's a new supply or, hey, this is a new venture or, hey, this is a new direction I want to go and they want to get out of the relationship, they're never upfront enough to be able to say, hey, I don't want this anymore. Instead, a lot of times they'll make life hell for you or they'll go down this whole path of getting to the place of getting you to discard them and they wash their hands of it. So you have this push pull of like hot and cold of like, I want you, I don't want you, I want you, I don't want you. And oftentimes the narcissist will set this up maybe because they're setting up the supply for the next, like the next person. And you see, oftentimes the narcissist doesn't want to be alone. And so if they don't have another supply lined up, they'll keep stringing you along until they get that next supply, until they ne get the next person lined up and secured in the wings, and then they'll discard and then they'll move on. Sometimes that push pull is to be able to keep that door open so that they can go to the next supply or they can go to the next person out there and they can still come back. They can still come back into your life to be able to control, to manipulate, to get in with you, whether that's physically, mentally, whatever it might be, to be able to get back into your life and to be able to come into your life whenever they want. Now you've got traditional discard where you have the narcissist where they get upset, they get frustrated and they just don't care anymore. They never care to start off with and they just discard you and they move on to the next supply. Then you also have reverse discard. So reverse discard is where the narcissist wants to break up with you, where they want to get out of the relationship, where they want to have a divorce, but they don't want to say it because saying it would mean that it's real. Saying it would mean that they'd have to be accountable that they're the ones that ask for divorce or they're the ones that ask for a breakup and they don't want to hold that responsibility. So they make your life hell in order to get out of the relationship. 
When this reverse discard is happening, you'll find the abuse ramping up, the, the verbal, the physical, the mental, the emotional trauma ramping up more and more and more because the narcissist is trying to figure out how do I get out of this relationship while still saving face, keeping my mask, and making it look like I'm the good person in the relationship. Did you ever have at the end where the narcissist is like saying like, hey, like I'm trying, I'm changing, or maybe that's you right now. You're in this situation. You're trying to figure out, should I stay? Should I go? Like, what do I do? And the narcissist is like, I'm trying, I'm changing. Like, give us more time. Like, don't you see all the progress that I've made? It's hard when I hear phrases like these, because looking back on my relationship with my wife, I use those. I use those countless times over multiple years of the marriages saying that, hey, I'm trying. I'm changing. Can't you see the progress that we've made? Don't you see how we've gotten better when in reality we hadn't? When in reality I was just faking it. I was just saying this has gotten better and then I would leave the house and continue to cheat. And leave the house and continue to go be with someone else. Because at the end of the day, I wasn't changing. I wasn't trying. I was pretending or I was faking or I was throwing breadcrumbs out there to keep her engaged so that I didn't look like the bad person, so that I didn't look like the person that was leaving the relationship for someone else, but that my wife would eventually leave me. That's something you have to be careful of because the narcissist will play on your sympathy and on your empathy that says, don't leave me. Don't leave me in the time that I'm changing. Now that I'm at my, my best, or now that I'm working harder at it, don't leave me now. Or now that I'm at my worst, like I can't believe you would leave me when I'm struggling so much, when this is so hard on me, and all the types of stuff that they'll bring up, and all of those are excuses and manipulation. A narcissist should never have to tell you that they're changing. They should be able to demonstrate that by their actions. If a person has to tell you that they're changing, that means they're not. Because change is demonstrated, change is sought after, change is seen by the actual motivation and change and mindset and attitude and drive and development and credentials and credibility of what's actually happening. You see that change happening before your very eyes and how they respond and how they act and how they demonstrate. And if a narcissist doesn't demonstrate change, they're lying to you and is manipulation. So if they say they're changing and they say they're trying, but you can't look at a list and see quantifiably how they're getting better, how they are growing, there is no active change there and they're just future faking you to extend their stay in your life. It's a giant future fake. Sometimes you get to the end of a relationship and they'll beg you to stay. They'll be like, please don't leave. I can't live without you. I don't know what I'm going to do. All this type of stuff. And you might have them begging right before you walk out the door, begging you to not to go. What I want you to know first and foremost is not because they miss you. And it's not because they care. It's because they don't want to look bad to other people out there. You see, if I beg you not to leave at the very end, and literally sometimes you'll be walking out the door, you'll be getting ready and they'll be freaking out, running around, slamming stuff, screaming, crying because they're so afraid of losing you. What they're afraid of is two things, either one, being alone, or two, not controlling the story. But ultimately, what they're thinking is if I try at the last second, and I can fabricate the story that I want to convince everybody else out there. So for me, it'd be like the idea of my wife just left. She just walked out. I begged her to stay the last five minutes she was in the house. I begged her to stay. Please don't go. We can work this out. We can figure this out. And as soon as she leaves, I call up the next person. Can you believe it? My wife left me. Like, I can't believe that. Like, I tried. Like, I even, I even said, like, let's go to counseling. Like, let's work on this. Like, I thought we were getting better. I thought we were, and it becomes a story that is fabricated for the next person and for the people around for the purpose of the mass, for the purpose of control, and for the purpose of securing new supply. So when they're asking and, ch and, and saying that they're changing and begging for that, the very last second, it's manipulation. You have to think a lot of times in the relationship, they want you to leave. They just don't want to be responsible for that leaving being them. The last thing I want to bring up is the change at the end. 
you get to the end, you're getting ready to walk out the door or maybe a week before you're supposed to get divorced or whatever, and you start to notice all these changes. Maybe they get into therapy. Maybe they finally plan the trip that you've been waiting for. Maybe they schedule something. You're like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe like they actually thought of me. And you start to think, wait a second, maybe I shouldn't leave because they're changing. Maybe I shouldn't go because they're giving me everything that I always wanted. If they're changing between the last month to end of the relationship, what they're doing is changing their manipulation tactic of you. So they're getting to the place where they're realizing, wait a second, this person is actually serious. Even though this is the 20th time they're leaving, they actually packed up everything and they're moving across the country. They are actually serious about this. So now I have to change what I'm doing in order to keep them longer. Change at the end of the relationship is not a lasting change. It is not a change that continues to happen. If you want it to see, is it actually a real change? Then leave. Take the relationship off the table. Cut away their supply. Take the addiction from the addict and say, hey, if you want to change and grow, then do that and see what happens. Because nine times out of ten, they never change. It's just a facade at the very end to be able to keep you. The other thing I want you to think of, and we'll end with this, is the idea that if they're changing at the very end, and if they're doing a lot of the things that you asked for for the past six months, six years, then you need to understand this. You need to listen up loud and clear. If they're doing all the things you wanted in the, in the past relationship, whether that's six months, six years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, if they're fulfilling all those promises, it's not because at the very end they got an epiphany. It's because at the very end they knew their manipulation was no longer working. But what that means, what that means is they knew they knew the entire time and they chose to pull that back. They chose to keep that away from you. And that should make you frustrated. That should make you upset. That should fire you up even more because then it's not just like, oh, they didn't know. Oh, they weren't growing. Oh, they hadn't developed. No, they knew and they purposely kept it from you and they used it at the very end to manipulate you to stay a little bit longer in your life. That's all that change is, is a manipulation of trying to control you a little bit longer. So work on breaking yourself free, breaking the trauma bond, getting away from the rumination phase, building your vision values, change your story, change your life.